Salve Maria. Salve Maria. Welcome to this second live streaming on the consecration course to our Blessed Mother. Before going, getting into the, to what we're going to be talking about today, I would first like to ask that you share with as many people as possible this, uh, this, uh, this live stream. Because the more people we can, can get to know about our Blessed Mother, about this consecration, we much we a lot very good for the, for the whole world, and also if any of you that are watching for the first time or whatever and you haven't signed in to our to our uh, on our channel, don't forget to to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on that little bell there so you'll be receiving the notices there when you when new things new videos come and different things like that. So, and also as we're as it's live, so you can. In the uh, in the chat there, put any questions there because our our technical team here they'll be passing to us any of the questions. I'm gonna already. I'm going to uh, like to ask your your forgiveness because unfortunately I'm sure we will not be able to answer all the questions because <laughs> the amount of people because we have questions coming via WhatsApp. There've been email thousands thousands of emails by WhatsApp and by well emails and WhatsApp messages. And very interesting, excellent questions. But unfortunately, I haven't been able to respond all of them yet to get back to you. But that's one of the reasons why we want to do this live here. Right? Now, before continuing, our, our technical team is asking if you can hear well, if this sounds okay. Just send in, yep. send in a message if anything's wrong. Right? And... Uh, but I'm trying to answer all of, to get, to answer all of your, your messages. Thank goodness. Thanks to our Blessed Mother. There are many and many, many. If, maybe we can even do another live before uh, our actual consecration. But 
just to remember also, our consecration is going to be on April 27th. And if you can, send, send your addresses so that we'll know if eventually we'll be able to arrange some masses eventually in Close in to area, you in your area, area your around parish, your parish. It all it all depends on you, priest, and where there are more more of you together, we can eventually do masses there. Of course, our live mass will be on April twenty seventh, in which we will all make our consecration. Okay. All right. So, so I guess we should go into the <laughs> straight and let's see what the different questions that people are are asking i will go straight because we're already getting now everyone's on lesson 14 no, lesson 15. 15 lesson 15 is lesson on. 14 was 14 15? all about 15. yeah it's 15 yeah we're on lesson 15 now, okay <laughs> and well yesterday's lesson was all about the rosary so it's one of the most important lessons i want to stress that the importance of the rosary. Try to pray your rosary every day. It doesn't have to be a long rosary. A rosary you can pray in 15 minutes, but that is your link with our Blessed Mother. It's through the rosary that she's going to do good to you, to each one of you, to your family. That's going to, through the rosary, she's going to protect you against so many attacks of the devil, so many snares that he lays against all of us. So never miss out on your rosary. Never skip your rosary, not even any of the Hail Marys of your rosary, every day till the end of our lives. So let's get into start the, the questions, Father. Very well. Okay, we have one here from Hillary's wrote some questions here. Father, I didn't manage to attend some of the lessons and I also failed to say some of the prayers. What should I do? Okay. That's something that always happens right around when you're in the middle of the lessons, when you're halfway through your, your preparation for your consecration. The devil doesn't want you to make your consecration. He knows that everything's going to change. And that our Blessed Mother is going to take you as her own property, as belonging to her. And she's going to have a special protection for you. And he comes with these scruples, temptations. I missed one or I missed the prayers. I haven't been able to say the prayers any day yet. Don't let that discourage you. We have to understand that our Blessed Mother, she's a mother, and she loves us. She knows our miseries. She knows our weaknesses, our lack of compenetration. She already saw all this from the very beginning. She brought you here. And if she brought you here, that's because she picked you amongst millions. And you have a special vocation, a special union with her. And who's going to do this is not you. She's the one that is going to do it. And on our part, what, was, what must we do? Confide in her, have confidence in her, in the love she has for us. So let's do everything we can. We missed out on some lessons. There will be a few days. We've got 28 lessons. Actually, several people have asked, why are there only 28 lessons when it's a 33-day 33 33. preparation, right? We have 28 lessons during a 33-day period. And that was purposely because sometimes people can't they fall back and they can't catch up. So we have a few extra days so that you will be able to, if you miss out one, don't stay behind. Skip that one 
and then try and pick it up either listening to two one day or on one of the days that we don't have a lesson, you can listen to that one that you missed or to whatever you've missed. But the most important thing is to make your consecration, make your consecration, because that is going to be a true change in your life. Our Blessed Mother is going to fill you with such graces. Everything so to say, seems to change. And the devil, as I said, will do everything for you not to make your consecration. So courage. If our Blessed Mother brought us this far, she's not going to leave us behind. That's a promise that she's going to take us to the end. So let us confide in this, our Mother, who looks upon us full of compassion and joy. Even if we can't make, do all the lessons, let's not be discouraged. Continue with our consecration. Let's make our consecration. And we'll pick up the lessons afterwards. But let us give ourselves entirely to her. Thank you, Father. Now, there's other one. She has this uh, question here. It's like, I have a doubt with relation to devotion to Mary. In Lesson 9, you explain really well, but may I ask you for some practical advice? So now the writes, when can we, we can love both Jesus and Mary at the same time, but practically we are still left with either Mary or Jesus situation. For example, I can pray the Our Father or the Hail Mary at any particular time, but I cannot pray both the Our Father and the Hail Mary at the same time. Of course. <laughs> Are there any suggestions or solutions you can offer to show how to practice the devotion to Mary without displeasing her son Jesus? Okay, okay. First of all, devotion to our Blessed Mother can never displease Jesus. Our Blessed Mother, she is the greatest work, God's masterpiece. She is our Lord's masterpiece. Imagine, imagine if we go to a museum, an art museum, and there we get some artist who makes his masterpiece. That's where this painting is where he put all his talent. And every little detail he put everything he knew, everything he could imagine. This is his masterpiece. All the other paintings, he, you know, he did a kind of not really paying much attention, but in this painting, that's where he put everything he had. And he, the artist, he dresses as a janitor and is there at, at a museum at the museum, and in we come. And seeing this painting, different artists, whatever. We and even it. other paintings of his too, right? Yeah, other paintings that he himself yeah, made. Right? Yeah. And let's say we come across the janitor, and we don't, you know, at the most we'll say, uh, good morning, and that's it. But then we stop in front of this painting, and we say, wow. This is fabulous. Look at this. Look at the details. Look at the colors. Look, this, this painter is genius. This is, we have to make a museum just for this painting. And we all get together and start to eulogize this painting without knowing even who did it. That janitor who's there, who in reality isn't the janitor. He's the, he's the actual the artist. Artist. He's full of pride, of joy, of a, a good pride, a reasonable yes. pride, a pride because he, it's his masterpiece. He, it's his real talent. And by, by praising his masterpiece, we're praising him even if we don't realize that he is the author. And he's much more joyful 
in our praising his masterpiece than if we were to turn to him and say, oh, you're marvelous, you're great, we li really like you. He's more moved and touched when we eulogize his masterpiece than, we, than when we praise him directly. Yeah, because sometimes you praise directly and might be looking like... Yeah, kind what, of, be, it's kind not, of false, you know? Yeah, <laughs> but when you praising his masterpiece without even knowing that he's there and without even knowing that it's for him, it's much more glorious than if we were to, to praise him directly. So we, here we have... God, who in all creation, of all creation, he made his masterpiece that was our Blessed Mother, that he wanted to be his own mother. And there he put everything. The theologians say that God, actually St. Thomas Aquinas says, that our Blessed Mother was a creature that God could not have made better. There he put everything he had. He, who was omnipotent, all-powerful, he could not have made her better. So when we come to him and say, Lord, your mother is fabulous. Your mother is incomparable. He feels full of joy. So I would even say the best way to give glory to Jesus is to give praise to his mo most holy mother. That's where he really feels praised by us. Oh, well, that's, that's okay. And that should also encourage everyone that's watching here how important it is for us to sh to get this message of the consecration out that's true. to more people. Because oh, yeah. the more people that consecrate themselves to our blessed mother, we're giving more glory to God. And that's so true. And that's what we need in the world today. The world that is so so turned its back on God. The key for the salvation of our world today is our Blessed Mother, is knowing how to honor God's masterpiece. And she, she is the model for all of creation. And being the masterpiece of all creation, in the degree that all creation adapts and, so to say, looks adapts itself and looks to her and is similar to her, reflects her. In that degree, all of creation is to come into order and therefore to true peace. That's what the world today me needs. Now another question here from, from Arnold. He's asking, should I go to confession before the consecration? Is it obligatory? Is com and is also to receive communion obligatory? Well, before, mm -hmm. okay. I don't know if you would permit me, Father, sure, yes. here to, before. Mm -hmm. this, um, it's always important for us to go to confession. Of course. It's always, and especially after we're going to do something so special, and consecrating ourselves to our Blessed Mother, putting ourselves in her hands, it's always, I think, be something very important for everyone to do. Mm -hmm. And also to help everybody to make this good confession before your consecration. We will be sending either via WhatsApp, email, or in the, in the course link, during the course there, uh, a An examination, examination of, conscience, of conscience, a whole thing there uh -huh. to help you to make a good confession before. Definitely. It's, it's very important. And also, confession. Confession as a priest, it's, I really feel... It's one of the most marvelous sacraments. It's so many times, and it, I, I say it's a real grace, the most touching, the most moving, the most blessed confessions I've had were confessions of people that went and sincerely, sincerely confessed horrors, horrors, but seeing that person truly repentant and sometimes discouraged, but above all, that true repentance, no matter how horrible the sins would be, 
you give them absolution. And it's incredible. I remember seeing when the person gets up and leaves, seeing him from behind. It's, my God, he's truly pardoned. The person changed something, something new, something new in him. And you saw a desire, you felt a desire to, to embrace him. Such was the, the esteem of hearing a person's confession. Horrors. But you saw that that was entirely, erased. entirely erased and totally obliterated. Incredible. And then afterwards, how many times, and it, it's really true, you get to know the person and you get to have a certain convivium with the person. You never, you'd have to make an effort to try to remember the sins that they confess because you don't remember that. You remember the joy it was of being able to pardon them. It's something that fills the priest with joy to be able to pardon any sin, and it's incredible. Another thing that happens with confession is that a person goes to confession always, always. He gets up full of joy. When confession is over, he's happy. He was scared to go to confession before. When, it's, when he confesses, he's so full of joy, he passes the, the whole week remembering, oh, I went to confession. I went to confession last Saturday. Oh, what a joy. It's Why? Because confession is truly exorcistic. There's so many, I would say, devils in the world today, devils, demons in the world today. And they, they come after us and fill us with sadness, with depression, with frustration. And whenever we go to confession, it's like confession puts all those miserables out. And the person feels relieved. That's, even, what, even that's why so much before the confession, like you said, person's scared and they don't. It's devils, like, it's, yeah. Yeah, devils uh, uh, demons, whatever, right? They're all, they don't want the person to go to confession. And then when he goes to confession, he feels so relieved, so full of joy. I've told people, people that come and despairing because the, whatever, the bank wants to, put them out of their house. They're owing money. They lost their job. Everything's going wrong. The dog got out and bit the neighbor's little girl. It, everything starts going wrong. Go to confession. Go to confession. And the person finishes confession. It's like all that disappears. And a, a happiness, a tranquility. I say to people, want to be happy today. In this sad year of 2024 want to be happy go to confession every two weeks and you will live happy with such a joy that your house can burn down they can steal they can steal your car you'll be it will almost not matter with such a joy you'll have in your soul that comes from confession and confession is fantastic because our Lord truly forgives our sins. That which we confess, no matter how horrible they may be, terrible. I, we won't get into details, but sometimes terrible, terrible things. I remember confessing uh, a certain mother, and she said, Father, and her two little children were there playing, playing in, you know, in the church. She said, Father, I look at my two children, and they're so darling. And I think they would have been three. And, you know, to console their confession, confession erases everything. Our Lord forgives everything. And he embraces us. And it's the only real way of finding joy in our world today.
And such is confession that even this poor lady, who was so full of of sadness, of frustration, almost despair, right? Even her on the day of judgment, that which she confessed will not be remembered. And that's what the theologians say. That which we confess, God forgets. And God is not like us. Someone steps on our toe, steps on our foot. He says, oh, excuse me. You say, oh, yeah, okay, but don't do it again, you know. He's, and I'll always remember, yeah, he stepped on my foot. No, God forgets it. And he doesn't remember, not even. I mean, he treats us. He doesn't treat us according to our sins. He forgets them. And on the day of judgment, they will not be remembered because we confess them. And that's what confession gives us. So I recommend very strongly that as much as possible, try to go to confession before making this step in your life, which will be the greatest step in your life, it will mark, it will be a mark, a footstep, a stone, a marking stone, right? In a milestone, I'd say, a milestone in your life in which you will have before your consecration and after. And a confession to pardon everything that we leave behind and start entirely anew. Now, if you can't go to confession, don't worry. Do your consecration one and the same. If you can, go to communion. But if you can't, try to make a spiritual communion. You know, we can receive the same graces. It's true. We can receive the same graces as a real communion by making a spiritual one. It all depends on the fervor with which we make it. So, and we can make as many spiritual communions as we want. Exactly. A day, too. So what is a spiritual communion? It's this. It's just a little prayer. My Lord, my Lord Jesus, come to my soul. That is a spiritual communion. And making this prayer a prayer like that, several times a day, he truly comes. And we can receive more graces through a spiritual communion even than through a communion that is made without any real recollection, right? Of course, we can never, dis- we can never despise the, a true communion because that is absolute. Our Lord comes to us, and even if we're distracted, even if we're, who's worthy? No one's worthy. As long as we can't be in, a, in sin, we cannot be in mortal sin, right? But our Lord, in communion at Mass, or in communion, receiving communion, sacramental communion. sacramental communion, He comes truly to us, just like in Jerusalem. Just like it's the same, it's He, the very one. And just as He would go to the house of Martha or Maria, right? It's Mary, yeah, Mary, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Martha, St. Mary Magdalene, Lazarus. He would go to have dinner there. It's much more. A communion is much more in which he comes to our home. He comes into our souls and he does marvels. St. Martha, when our Lord was at her home and she was busy, busy with this and that and serving and whatever, and she complains about St. Mary Magdalene. Would our Lord not be happy to be at her home just because she was full, she was so busy? Of course not. Our Lord was joyful to be at her home and filled her with graces. And he called her to an even higher state of soul, that which was of St. Mary Magdalene for her to do everything she had to do, but interiorly adoring him. So let's 
definitely, if you can receive communion, if you can't, make a spiritual communion. Many spiritual communions on that day. Recollect yourself. Try to spend five or ten minutes asking our Lord to come to your soul and asking him to clean it, that you be entirely, that you belong entirely to our Blessed Mother, that he unite, that he unite you entirely to her, that he give you a special communication and devotion to her. All this, all the more we can do, all the better. I'm sure a lot of you have the same questions. Sometimes people are a little bit shy mm-hmm. and to ask the questions and everything. Go ahead and send them. <laughs> keep on sending them there. Because we also, it doesn't matter if somebody else asks the question, go ahead, ask the question there. Because then if we have a lot of people asking the same question, it, there's more of a chance that we'll get to those ones there to have respond a live stream there. And, and also to, in. there's uh, more people asking the question there. Well, well, easier for us to, easier in the yeah. sense that we'll, to answer there because as we said in the beginning the amount of questions that we and received is it's impossible to answer everybody's questions and the questions are truly a joy they're really you can see our blessed mother touching the souls and touching your souls and and opening your souls to her and it's it's a way that here on the other side of the cameras we perceive and we feel the graces that you're receiving so make a lot of questions. Don't be shy. Okay, so Father, we have another one here from, from uh, Justin here. And he's asking, because, you know, in the beginning, every time we start a video, and at the end, we always say, Salve Maria. So I'm sure a lot of you oh, yeah, are asking, sure. yeah. <laughs> why do we say Salve Maria? Well, we have Justin here ask this. What does the greeting Salve Maria mean? He okay. said, like the Franciscans, they greet everybody with the greeting, peace and goodness. Okay. Should we, everybody making their consecration, greet everyone with Salve Maria also? Okay. Okay, first of all, Salve Maria. Salve Maria is Latin, okay? And, and it's a salutation. It's a greeting. In old, the Roman times, they would greet each other with Ave, or Salve, right? Salve, Frederick. Salve, uh, Salve, John. They would greet themselves, which would you translate to hail, as we say the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace. In Latin, it's Ave Maria, right? The Hail Holy Queen. Hail Holy Queen. In Latin, is salve regina, salve, right? So it's actually a greeting, hail. Just as they would say, hail the emperor, we say, hail Mary, salve Maria. Where does this come from? This comes from our, our religious order, the Heralds of the Gospel. As you know, it be- began in, in here in, in Brazil, yeah. right? And... Uh, our founder was very prominent. He was a very prominent r- religious orator in that would speaker. religious speaker in the in the nineteen twenty the late nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. Um, part of the Marian congregations, uh, the religious youth movement that was very strong in Brazil in those, those times. And uh, that was a time when there was, it was so exuberant, this movement. I mean, there, the processions, the religious processions were massive, fabulous, huge. massive, massive. And uh, our founder, right, our, actually the one who formed it, our founder, right, he was Professor Plinio Correa de Oliveira, Right. He was just a young man back then. He was in his 20s and very famous, as I said, a famous speaker. Uh, and part of the Marian congregations, at a certain point, started the Nazis, started their movements. And their, they wanted 
to steal the Catholic youth and take them their way to that Gnostic, atheistic, uh, that atheistic mentality that seemed to be conservative, seemed to be rightist, right? But in reality, was something to take people away from the church. And these Nazis, their, their Nazi parties here in Latin America, they came and they, they were the ones that would, you know, confront the communists and whatever. And unfortunately, many young men, many of the youth back then started to have illusions with the Nazis. Yeah, they were right? fighting against the communists. Yeah. All this was before the Second World War. I yeah. mean, it, it seemed at the time, finally, after 15 years of the horrors of Russia, right, finally someone was doing something against Russia. So it seemed, it was very cleverly set up, it seemed to be something good, right? And here that you had a huge religious movement, Catholic, and, but which, in which the youth seemed to be attracted to this false movement that was atheistic, that wanted to take people away from, from God, take people away from the church. And they started having their salutation which was something, an atheistic salutation. Gnostic I forget thing. what it was, Gnostic. It was something, uh, but it, it was, it wound up, wound up being in, in Germany, they started with Hail Hitler, Heil Hitler, right? Here in Brazil, they had something else, but it didn't, no one really knew what it meant because it was some, yeah. some weird Greek words, right? So in one of the meetings of the Marian movement, they said, Someone mentioned that the Nazis were starting to have their salutation. It seemed to be attracting Very to love. Catchy, you. catchy, catchy. It was catchy. So, what to do to oppose that, right? And the best thing to do to oppose that is to have something Catholic that would be even more attractive. And so what should we say? What, what, can, what, what can it be? And there was a discussion on what would be a good salutation, right? And that's when someone who was right next to our, to our Dr. Pino, to, to, to Professor Pino, some boy said, why not Salve Maria, right? And then, but the boy said so, and it just kind of fall, fell, you know, no one really paid attention to what he said. And then Professor Plio liked the idea. He was just a, he was just a boy, you know. So he was 24, 25, 26. And then he said, "Oh, why not Salve Maria?" As so and so had suggested, Salve Maria. What happened is that back then he had such prestige. Professor Plio had such prestige that immediately they all said, "Oh, definitely Salve Maria. Let's use that as the Catholic." Salutation. Instead of saying, hi, say, Salve Maria, right? Hail Mary. And because of the prestige of Professor Plinio, that caught in all of Brazil, right? And from Brazil, it went on to other countries. And today, all of Latin America, uh, the Catholics greet themselves with Salve Maria. Well, that's... Uh Mm -hmm. So there you see, let's start greeting everybody that way. Mm -hmm. Why not? I mean, greet your friends, the people. Definitely. Because it's, a it's, a, it's something that, like in the beginning, when they asked that one question about the devotion to the Blessed Mother, and, and you explained about the, the, like the, the painter that made the, the beautiful painting, his masterpiece. And so us saying, saying, doing this greeting, greeting people that way, Hail Mary, Salve Maria. We're giving glory to God. Definitely. Definitely. And it's a prayer. It's a, and it actually, it brings graces. So it's a much, much better way for us Catholics to greet each other, saying, Salve Maria, than if we were to just say, hey, hi. It's much, it's much more noble. Much more. And also, mm -hmm. you'll be stepping on the head of the devil. Yeah. And expelling him. Because it's every time we pronounce our Blessed Mother's name, 
he flees. So that's something that would be. Yeah. Thank you, yeah, Father. That's for sure. That's for sure. Okay. Now we have another question from Barney. If I fall into sin after making my consecration, what should I do? Okay. Barney, if that disgrace happens, immediately run to confession. Everything is pardoned. Anything is pardoned in confession. Don't let a night go by in the state of sin. If we have the disgrace of committing a sin, no matter how horrendous, no matter what malice we had in committing the sin, I don't know, we went nuts and we, out of hatred for God, we committed some horrendous sin. It doesn't matter. Run to confession. Everything is pardoned. And not only pardoned, but we are received by God just as the prodigal son. He embraces us. Our Blessed Mother embraces us, full of joy, and calls and says, bring, bring a new dress for my son. Put a ring on his finger. Let's make a party. Let's have a party because my son, who was dead, he has come back to life. And that's what happens in each and every confession. So if we have the disgrace of falling into sin, run to confession and ask pardon. And actually, this consecration is going to help us very much because who gives us that grace is our Blessed Mother herself. She's the one that moves our hearts to contrition and moves us to asking for confession, to going to confession. Now we have from Morgan. It's, um, I know that Our Lady's mediation is important, but I have Protestants in my family that say that in the Bible says that Jesus is the only mediator. So the question I have is, is devotion to Our Lady indispensable for our salvation? Very well, very well. Now, it is true that our Lord himself said that he is the only mediator between us and the Father. And that is entirely theological. It is impossible for us to save ourselves without our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one, God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, he is the one that obtained pardon for us. He is the one who sacrificed himself on the cross and, so to say, with his own blood, bought our salvation. He, not only that, he is heaven itself. Our heaven will be the beatific vision, the vision of him, of the, whole, of the eternal Father and of the Holy Spirit. It, it, it will be the grace to contemplate them for all eternity. So there doesn't exist any heaven without our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, so to the Father for our salvation, we need our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's absurd to imagine any salvation without him. Now, with he who is our mediator, can we have a mediator between him and us? Of course we can. So, take for example, uh, a kingdom, a medieval kingdom. You have the king of the realm, and uh, he, he actually, we need something from him, right? Let's say I need a grant, and I'm a poor, I'm a peasant, and I'm a poor man, and I definitely need a grant from him, and I need to be able to ask him. I could go straight, go knock on the doors of the palace, right? Ask for an on audience the gates, with the, at the gates, right? Ring the bell at the gates and say, open, I want to go. And the guards are going to look and say, the soldiers are going to look and who's this, right? And they're probably, it'll probably get, be hard for me to get past the gates, right? But let's say, okay, yeah. let's say I get to back to the gates. 
it'll even be harder for me to get into the palace. So we wind up, and when the guard's not looking, we'll sneak in. And then we'll try to find our way around all those beautiful marble marble floored rooms and high ceilings and where are we going to get and where's the where's the king right we we can do it we can ask even a better way would be to try to make an appointment right and see if amongst the thousands of people that the king has to receive if he'll receive us our little peasants right us little peasants but why don't we do something different? Let's be clever. We buy a bouquet of beautiful roses. The best roses we can find in, in the whole city. And we prepare this bouquet in a beautiful vase. And we know that at such and such a time, the queen... The mother queen, the mother of the king, she goes to Mass. And when she's going to Mass, she's very kind. And to looks, and she looks and, and, and greets, and and greets the, different, the different peasants that are on the way. And we come to her with a beautiful bouquet of roses and say, My queen, could you receive this? And could you ask? Could you ask your king to attend me, to, to receive me? I want, I need to make a, or you, we can even ask her, would you have a moment? Oh, my lady, would you have a moment? And she, in her kindness, stops and listens to our petition. Could you obtain from the king an audience, uh, for him, ask him to attend me, to, to receive me, to receive me? And then she has one of her guards take a note, jot down our name, whatever. And pretty soon we receive a message saying that it's such and such a time we can be at the palace. And at that time we'll be able to, the king will receive, receive us. Right? So when that morning the queen goes to the king and says, my son, the other day I was going to Mass and there was a peasant man or a peasant woman who asked very specially for a grant. He's needing a grant, whatever. Huh? And he was a very, he was very kind. He a very sweet man or a very sweet little girl. And look, he gave me this bouquet of roses. My son, give him a special attention. Pay special attention to him. Help him in everything he needs. Which way are we more likely to be able to receive the grant that we need? Going through her. So just the same. Our Lord, who loves this position of mediators, he wants us and he's delighted that we go to him through our Blessed Mother. He wants us, he wants his heart to be moved by her. He has such love for her that when our petition comes through her, he is all sweetness, all kindness. So definitely, we should have her always as our mediator. You can do it the other way if you want, but it's going to be a lot a lot harder. A lot harder. <laughs> a lot harder. So, and being the way we know, the way we, we humans are, we, we try to go for, mm -hmm. to get the same, it's, so you okay. see, thank you, Father, for oh, thank you. that one. Thank you. A very good question, yeah. actually. Very. The answer is very good. Mm -hmm. Now, Father, I have a fear from Jolie. She's asking, what differentiates consecrated people from non-consecrated people who are also Catholic? Okay. At first sight, nothing. But in reality, everything. So when we go to church, there'll be a, all the other Catholics will be there. But we made a consecration 
to our Blessed Mother, in which we gave ourselves to her as slaves of love. And that's very profound. We are now slaves. What is a slave? In Roman law, a slave was considered as a thing. Just like, just like I can have a pen. Uh, a pen, a big pen, right? It's a thing. And I could, if, I, if it doesn't work or it, let's say if I have a big, big pen, I can do whatever I want with it. It belongs to me, right? And I, I can throw it away if I want to, right? We are the same in our Blessed Mother's hands. Of course, she's never going to throw us away. We belong to her. But just as this pen has no rights, has no merits, so also we. We belong to her. All our merits belong to her. And therefore, a slave is the last of men. It's the lowest category. So a person who's the last of the peasants is above a slave because a slave has no rights. Right, the peasants in Roman law have rights, but a slave doesn't has no, rights. has no rights. So we too, so we cannot complain if someone offends us. We don't have any rights. We belong to Our Lady. She is the one who uh, who deserves. If we we don't have any merits. All our merits is a slave. A slave did what he's supposed to do. And that's how we are. We should do. Actually, our Lord speaks about that in the gospel. He said, what would you, which one of you, speaking to those high priests, when having a slave, having a, a servant, who's out and works all day on the farm, in the fields, when he comes back at the end of the day, which one of you are going to say, look, sit down and have dinner? To the contrary, won't you probably say, go make dinner for me, serve dinner for me, and after I eat, then you can sit down and have your dinner, right? That's the way things are. And not that our, letter, our lady does not treat us like that. Here we have, we are slaves to the mother of mothers, to the queen of queens, to the most, the sweetest, the sweetest lady that ever exists, ever existed in all of history. But we have to see our, ourselves so. Our Lord says, so we before God should see ourselves as slaves. When we do all our work, do marvels, when we've done masterpieces, we should see, I on, we should say to ourselves, I only did what I was supposed to do, right? I don't deserve anything. And we too, before the others, we don't deserve anything. They, since they're not slaves, they should pass in front of us. We should be the last ones. And we should see ourselves so and not have any, uh, be upset when we feel ourselves despised. No, we don't deserve anything. We belong to her. And this is a new life that will fill you with joy. You cannot imagine the joy you will have in seeing yourself as worthless as not deserving anything, as being, and when you've done marvels, knowing all glory to her and nothing to me. It's one of the greatest joys of your life. That's impressive. Yeah. It's also, we can say also, Father, I know, that uh, since you said that we belong to her, we are her it's property. True. So she, in a sense, she's going to do more for us oh, than yes. for those that aren't. Most definitely. Like She's uh, not gonna that's for sure. But since that we belong to her, we're per, or her property, we personally belong to her, she will do much more. She will, of course. She will look over us. She will guide us. She'll, she'll protect us much more than 
it's like any one of us if we have if we have um let's say any object it's a diamond actually in in one of the in one of the lessons we spoke about this uh, a queen has a jewel and that jewel is a precious jewel that she loves so very much right it's her property it belongs to her if she that jewel that she loves so much that belongs to her if that jewel were by some some mishap were to fall into the mud she would immediately call her servant call a servant to have him pick it up and wash it carefully why because it belongs to her now a jewel that might belong to someone else if it may even fall the queen wouldn't worry so much about it she'd let someone else do it right but belonging to her this jewel belonging to her she's going to take special care and that's truly how she's going to treat us we belong to her now and she will not not despise that which belongs to her and we are very specially loved by her once again the stress there why we have to to share this mm-hmm. this consecration to people because almost definitely you see one more reason why yeah being belonging to our blessed mother we can't even imagine what she will do and can do for each and every one of us if we make this consecration and have that devotion and that's to the her. thing making this consecration and and giving ourselves to her she is truly going to sanctify us she is going to make us so so to say worthy of her she is going to make us more beautiful more uh cleaner and she will of course she's not going to despise that which belongs to her she's going to make us holy and that's the most secure way for us to get to heaven is to put ourselves as a thing in her hands as that which belongs to her and much more as a servant that she loves dearly tenderly she's not going to let that servant get sick she's going to take care of him she's going to bring him closer she's going to present him to our lord and she is going to bring us to heaven Another one question here. We're only going to have to be able to, not much longer because we're almost, our time is almost up. It's already. I've so. been speaking too much. No, Excuse no, me. no. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure nobody's complaining about that. So one is, person has this question. Why did God allow our Blessed Mother to be so hidden during her earthly life? You said all these these great things that was well, showing how our Blessed Mother is, but why, so then why was she so hidden in her your okay. life here on earth. In reality, in the beginning of Christianity, there was, after our Lord had ascended into heaven, there was such an enthusiasm for our Blessed Mother. They, the, the apostles realizing who she was and the glories in her soul and the marvels, all the marvels that, she, that were in her, there was a, even a tendency to have her as like a fourth person of the Holy Trinity. In other words, to have her as as a goddess, right? There was a, even, who was this? It was St. John Damason. St. John Damason, who wrote a letter to someone else, or either it was his disciple or one, he was writing to the one who had brought him to the Catholic faith, Therefore, then, St. Saint, Saint Paul, right? I forget exactly, but he, he said that he had met Mary. And then he said, if it weren't for the formation I received, I would take her for a goddess, right? So spectacular she was. And to avoid this deviation of the Catholic faith, our Blessed Mother wanted to be, so to say, hidden, so that all would love 
her divine son. Actually, that's what she does today. She, we're going to consecrate ourselves to her. But she is going to be pointing us to Jesus. She's going to be taking us to Every, Jesus. All the praises that we could give her, she passes everything straight. Everything to Jesus. She doesn't keep anything for everything herself. Everything Jesus. goes straight yeah. to her. And she's so discreet. But our Lord, therefore, permitted that during his life, she almost would not be noticed. Very, there are very few parts of the gospel that speak of her, right? Because his plan was for a great era in which she would come to be known. And she would then revive the faith and bring people back to her divine son. And I think that's what we're going to be, we are going to start to live in our days, a revival of the faith through her because she is still going to bring the world to a grandeur of holiness, of sanctity, of devotion to her divine son. But she is going to do this. So I believe that our Lord reserved her great mission still for the future. In other words, for the days we live in. It seems like, unfortunately, we... We're reaching, is up. we're reaching the end of our time. So. What a pity. <laughs> so, but it's it's something that, I don't know, we, we for nowadays, and, and, and for us to be able to practice this consecration, to practice this virtue, it's almost like we need the support of each other. That's right. We need That's to true. we need to be have that. And by all of us, we're making this consecration. All those that already made their consecration, those are going to make their consecration now. Now it's like we, we know each other now. It's something that although we don't we don't see you, right? You're seeing us, but we don't we don't see you. But it's but true. Our Blessed Mother gives a grace by which we almost feel each and every one of you feel the graces you're receiving, and that's because she wants to do good to you. She touches our souls too, and it's like we're a family. Yeah, we're over ten thousand. No, 12,000. 12,000 12, that are making their consecration. All of us form a family. And that's very true, huh? This is in the, in the, the creed that we say on every Sunday, right? I believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. saints. We, this communion of saints is a family of all those that are in the state of grace. And in this family... We, who are making our consecration together, we form a family in this family. And therefore, we must pray, pray for each other. Remember, when we're making our consecration, or even today, tonight, say a special prayer to Our Lady that we can, you know, just a word or two, asking graces for the others who are making their consecration that we don't even know personally. But always, that's what I've been saying. I've been saying my masses every day for each and every one of you, for all of, all of us that are making our consecration. And thus, let's all together pray for each other and ask that we may all benefit from the graces that we all receive. Father, and that's also why we in the Heralds and to our, our founder, Monsignor João, they're promoting this this course of the consecration is because that especially our founders he's preoccupied he's worried about everybody in the world that's right. wants to bring as many people mm -hmm. to make this consecration so to have them that link with our blessed mother to be tied so to say chained i don't know if some of you may have might have noticed on, on our habit we wear a chain around our waist right. and that's a sign of that consecration that we are chained to our blessed mother it's and we're chain of slavery. To, yep. And she's holding the other end of that chain. And she, so the more people we can get together to be like that, the more souls that we can save and, to, and also to give glory to our Blessed Mother and ultimately to in God. The, in the beginning of the church, the pagans used to say, see how much they love each other, right? That, that 
happiness of brothers and sisters that desire that the other be a saint, that the other become closer to our well, blessed How many mother. conversions in the Colosseum just yeah. because of seeing that, that love between just the see Christians? The love between the Christians, right? And today in this world of sorrow and despair, we're called to be those that have such a love for each other, desiring that the others be closer to our blessed mother, that the people from all around will see what's different in these here. What's different? There's a joy in their eyes. There's a happiness that no one else has, and people see it. And we can say, what's different? We are slaves. We are slaves of love to our Blessed Mother. To the end, and before we, uh -huh. yeah, before asking Father to give the final blessing, I once again want to re remind you that if you're not subscribed to our channel yet, yeah. please subscribe there and click on the bell there to, so you can follow mm -hmm. all the different videos and news that, uh, that we, we put out there. Okay. Once again, thank you very much to being with us this evening or day, depending on the part of the world you are with. Now, Father. Now, in these next two weeks, may our Blessed Mother show each and every one of you all her love, all her, her special care for you, and bring you ever closer to our Immaculate Heart. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Salve, Salve Maria. Maria. Thank you.